We're gonna take a look at how you can very easily use the accordion widget in Elementor to create a view more button, like this one. See more, read more, whatever you want to call it, it's the kind of button that reveals more content on the same page. And the best part, you can use this for text, you can use it for images, videos, even products, or whole containers that include a large part of your page. Anything, really. It's really simple, it just takes a tiny bit of CSS, so let's get into it. Before we do this, we have to make sure we have our nested widgets activated. To do that, we're gonna go into our dashboard, go under Elementor, Settings, and then go under Features. Over here, make sure you have nested elements set to active. This is gonna enable us to use the new container-based accordion widget. Over here, I have my page built with Elementor. I'm gonna press Edit with Elementor to access the editor, and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add in a container. Then inside that container, I'm just gonna add in an accordion widget. So I'm just gonna press the plus, type in accordion, and I'm just gonna drag it in. The biggest difference between this and just the regular accordion widget is that first, we're gonna style it to look like a button, and second, it disappears after you open it, instead of just staying there. In the accordion, first, let's go under content. Under layout, we're gonna get rid of all of the items except one, because we don't need them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the second and the third one. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add in some content to my accordion so it looks a bit better, and so we have something to work with, something cool to look at. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this accordion, which I already styled and prepared, and then I'm gonna just copy the content. So over here, I'm gonna copy this container, and I'm just gonna paste it in here. And what I'm pasting in here is basically a carousel widget with some content and some styling applied. Remember, you can put in any kind of content, so just add in whatever you want. And there we go, I have my content ready. Before I add in my CSS, we need to edit and style our accordion widget just a little bit. Let's go back into our accordion and let's go under content and over here under icon. Since this is gonna be a button and I don't want any icons in the button, I'm just gonna go ahead and under expand and collapse, I'm gonna choose none. So we don't have any icons. Then I'm gonna go into interactions. I'm gonna set the default state to all collapsed. That way our accordion isn't open by default. You can then go ahead and change the animation duration if you want to, but I like to keep it as is. Hey, it's me again, sorry to interrupt. If this video is helpful, please make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. It really does help me out a whole lot. Next, let's go under style. The only thing we really need to edit here is the actual text, the header, so let's go under header. You can ignore everything else or you can use it if you want to. If you're adding in containers and content and whatnot, it makes sense to style that instead. For example, you could add in a background color to your content over here, but why would you? Just style the actual content, your containers and widgets, it's easier and you have more control over everything. So I'm gonna leave all of these options alone and I'm just gonna style the header. The font family, size, line height. So for the title, I'm just gonna use my global font. And by the way, if you want to know how to set up global fonts, colors and other site settings, I have an awesome video on that, so go check it out. The link is in the description. Then you're gonna have to make sure you set up the colors correctly. Your normal color, so the one displayed when the button is in its normal state, in my case, it's gonna be white. The hover color for when users hover over it, and again, I want it to be white. And we don't really need the active color because the button is gonna disappear. But I'm still gonna set it up, and you should as well, because it might help you see what you're doing when you're working. So I'm just gonna set it to be white as well. Next up, it's time to add in our CSS. And this will be available down below, so you can just copy and paste it in, and then edit it to fit your needs. So I'm just gonna copy this, and then I'm gonna go under Advanced, Custom CSS, and I'm gonna paste it in here. Now this is for Elementor Pro users. If you're using the free version of Elementor, you're gonna have to modify the CSS a little bit, we're gonna get into that later. And also, in that case, add your CSS by going into your admin bar, press customize, additional CSS, and paste it in here. And before you add in the CSS, just make sure your accordion is closed so you can see what you're doing in regards to the button. If it's not, it's not a big deal. You'll just, you can just delete a part of the CSS and paste it in again, or just reload Elementor. But 
the second you open this, the button is gonna disappear. By the way, to avoid accidentally opening it, I recommend you use the navigator instead of clicking directly on the widget. So I pasted my CSS in here and right away you can see my title is now in the shape of a button. So let's take a look at how you can style this to fit your project. The first thing you're gonna notice is that the button is aligned to the left side of the container. Now, when you are doing this, you're still gonna be limited by the space your accordion has. In that regard, we are still limited by the widget. Meaning, if you want your content to be full width, you have to make sure that the container the accordion is in, in my case it's this one, is also set to full width. You only get as much space for the content as the accordion widget has. I'm just gonna keep it boxed and I'm gonna go back into my accordion. To reposition our button, let's just go into the accordion widget, go under content and just change the item position to whatever you want. I'm gonna center it. After that, I'm gonna go back into my CSS. The first thing you're gonna want to adjust is the background color. So I'm just gonna go ahead and change out the background color. And now I can see my text. And you can change the text on this button by going into Accordion, Content, Layout, opening up item number one, and just changing the title. I'm gonna name it, this is a button, and now I have this is a button button over here. The second thing you're gonna want to adjust is padding. Now for the unit, I'm using EM in this case. For an in-depth explanation about this and about other CSS units, I have an awesome video on that, so go check it out after you finish watching this one, the link will also be in the description. Hey, editing Tim here. I just have to mention one little detail. Now, if you're really, really paying attention, you might notice that the CSS you're gonna find down below is just a little bit different from this one. There is one difference. I just changed this class from EN Accordion Item Title Header to EN Accordion Item Title Text. And again, I changed it over here. Since you're gonna be copying the CSS, it doesn't really matter. It's gonna work the exact same way and the whole process is the exact same. I just changed it so we can take full advantage of using EM for padding. With the CSS you're seeing here, EM will not scale with the font size of the button. With the changed class, it will. Meaning if you change the font size, the padding is gonna scale up or down with the font size, which makes it perfect for buttons and it makes it perfect when it comes to keeping proportions of those buttons the same. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. And if you're using any other unit for padding, such as pixels or REM, it doesn't matter either. I'm just mentioning this to avoid any confusion. Okay, editing Tim signing out. I'm gonna go back to editing and I'm gonna let regular Tim take over but you can use any unit you want. Pixels, for example, just type in PX to change it to pixels. I'll stick to EM. The first number is the vertical padding. So if I make this larger, you can see it gets taller. And the second number is the horizontal padding. Next up, we have our border. You can change the width, you can change the style, or you can change the color. For the style, you can make it dashed or dotted, for example, but there's no way to control the gaps with CSS only, so that's a potential topic for another video. So I'm just gonna keep it solid and I'm gonna keep the width at one pixel. And if you don't want to have a border at all, you can just go ahead and delete this part of the CSS and this part of the CSS. If you don't want a border when the button is normal, but you do want a border on hover or vice versa, you can control that with the correct border colors. So in my case, let's say I want my normal button to not have a border. I'm gonna set my border color to the same purple that is used for my background color. And because my background color on hover is set to black and my border color on hover is also set to black, I don't have a border there either. So let's say I want a border on my hover. I'm just gonna go ahead and change out the color of the border. And now when, when I hover over this button, there's a border. It's very hard to see. I'm just gonna make it a little bit thicker on both of them. And there you go. Why are we doing it this way? Well, because when you hover over the button and one of these states has a border and the other doesn't, the button is gonna get bigger or smaller on hover because now there's a border on one of them and there isn't a border on the other one. So if I set the border to one pixel on my normal state and four pixels on my hover state, you're gonna see the button gets bigger, which might be something you want, but I don't in this case. So I'm just gonna change everything back to the way it was. So I technically do have a border 
but is the same color as my background colors, so it's not visible. Next up, we have our border radius. You can set this to whatever you want. If you want sharp edges, just set it to zero or delete this part of the CSS entirely. For the transition, you can set how long it takes for the hover effect to happen. I like to keep it at 0.2 seconds. Next up, we have our hover state. Here we are styling what our button looks like when we hover over it. So as you can see, we have the background color set to a black. And when I hover over the button, it's black. The same thing goes for the border and the border radius. You could even animate the border radius. If I set the border radius of my normal state to 1500 pixels, and I set the border radius of my hover state to zero, we get this transition from a rounded button to a sharp button which might be something you want. I think it looks better the other way around, so zero pixels to 1500, but it works either way, but I'm just gonna keep it as is. So you can style pretty much everything you want for the text colors. We already said those earlier under style and header. Then we get to the interesting part. This part of the CSS is gonna hide the button when the accordion is expanded, so when somebody clicks on it. This is also the part of the CSS you can delete and add back in if you accidentally open it and want to see the button again without reloading the editor. So if I go ahead and I open the button, it's gone, and if I delete this, you can see the button shows up, but I have to close this because if I add it back in without closing it, we're in the same position. So go ahead and close this and add it back in and you don't have to reload Elementor. Then over here, we're just removing this annoying gray border. If I go into any other widget, you're gonna see there's a gray border over here. You could go ahead and get rid of this under style, but you have to remove it everywhere for both the accordion and the content for all states, normal, hover, active. So it's just a lot easier if you keep in this tiny little bit of CSS that's gonna do all of that work for you. And then last but not least, we have a media query. Over here, you can copy and paste in whichever part of the CSS to adjust it for different screen resolutions. For example, if I want to change the padding for tablet, so for devices between 767 and 1024 pixels, I just place the entire thing inside of the media query and adjust whichever values I want to, in my case, the padding. So if I go under responsive, go under tablet, you're gonna see the padding can be adjusted over here for this separately and the desktop version stays the same. Now let's talk about how you can do this with the free version of Elementor. You're gonna notice that in front of every class I'm targeting, I'm using selector. This means that the CSS only applies to this specific accordion widget. If you want to have this effect on multiple accordion widgets, or if you're not using Elementor Pro, you can go ahead and go under advanced and under layout, give your accordion a class. This class can be anything, it just has to match when you target it in the CSS. I'm gonna name it read minus more. Then I'm gonna go back into my CSS and just replace selector with dot read minus more everywhere. Don't forget the dot. And once I replace this everywhere, it's gonna work the exact same as it did before. If I go ahead and I open this, the button is gonna disappear. Now, one more thing I like to do is add some motion effects to my content. In this case, you can tell I applied a motion effect to the content in my carousel widget to my slides. When I go ahead and I open this button, you're gonna see they all slide up one after the other. You can do that with whatever content you're adding. All you have to do is go into your piece of content. In my case, I'm gonna add this to the slide in my carousel widget. So I go into that slide, I go under advanced, motion effects, and then choose the entrance animation. You can choose whichever one you want. I usually use slide in up. And then for my first slide or container or widget, whatever it is, I usually leave the animation delay empty as is, so at zero. The second one, I'm gonna put it to 800. The third one to 200 and so on. I like to go up in increments of 100. That helps us create this really cool effect when you use this button to show more content, it's gonna slide in unevenly, one after the other, just like this. By the way, all of these cool effects, such as this reveal effect in the menu, these awesome animations over here, and this hover effect on these cards, all of these are things I show you how to do on my channel, so go check out my other videos. There's a lot you can learn. If you found this video interesting, check out this video next. It's very interesting as well.
and make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons. Thank you for watching.